You're listening to the Greek's Gridiron, live with Ethan Haristadoulou. What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the Greek's Gridiron. I am Ethan Haristadoulou. It's February 22nd, 2022. Been an interesting day. The whole Aaron Rodgers thing for the NFL news uh, has been quite quite something to follow. I was working last night when he made his social media posts on Instagram, thanking some people and then watching the NFL's media kind of fly into a firestorm about what it could mean and what it was alluding to. And then the, you know, the announcement of him being on Pat Pat McAfee show today, and it ultimately amounting to nothing in the media, then becoming very upset with themselves. It's been rather funny watching all that boil down. I think that the media just kind of ran with that a little too aggressively I understand that, you know, people are waiting for an announcement from him, but the guy should be allowed to post without it automatically being an assumption that it has to do with him, either, you know, his retirement or just his decision in general. Some interesting stuff there. Also, USFL draft is tonight. We'll be covering that tomorrow, at least the first, I believe it is one through 12 or one through 13 rounds that go on tonight. We'll cover that tomorrow. And then tomorrow morning at 10 a.m., the remaining of the rounds will be running through. We'll cover that probably later in the day on Wednesday as well. But today... We are discussing the AFC South Power Rankings I have put together for you guys, continuing on with my divisional power rankings here with the AFC South. A lot of, get, lot of stuff to get into, so hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's talk the AFC South division. This is a division that is a tale of two halves, in my opinion. You have two teams kind of struggling to get themselves out of the basement, and then you have two teams that are one's a playoff contender and one should be a playoff contender that didn't make it to the playoffs this year. And we'll get into that further when we get to them. But this is a division that there's, there's quite a gap between the bottom two and the top two. And then there's like a gap from one to two and then from two to three and four. So starting at fourth, because we run four through one here, we have the 4-13 Houston Texans. Yes, the, actually, I have the Texans ranked at the bottom as opposed to the Jaguars, despite the fact the Jaguars had a worse record at 3-14. and 14. Why is that? Well, because there's a little bit more stability in Jacksonville, in my opinion, at the moment than there is in Houston. They just brought in head coach Lovey Smith. They upgraded him from defensive coordinator to the head coaching spot. There's a lot of questions outside of the head coach, though. What becomes of Deshaun Watson? Are they going to run it back with Davis Mills, who actually had a pretty solid rookie season despite everything that was going on around him? Do they end up trading Laramie Tunsil? Do they trade Cook? Do they, you know, do they make moves for any players? What do they do with the cap space that they have and, you know, a handful of pending free agents and all these big name guys that if they're going to reset the roster, do they hang on to and do they move on from? Who do they trade? Who do they don't? How much compensation are they going to get for it? Are they going to get any compensation at all for somebody like Deshaun Watson? Here's how I look at the Texans. It's been a wild ride the last you know couple of years for them. Going from David Culley now to Lovey Smith was a little bit of a head scratcher. I don't understand why they didn't just go with Lovey Smith last year if this is the route that they were planning all along, which a lot of people speculate is not the route that they were planning all along. And it sounds like the whole Case Keenum thing was where they're where they were really putting all their eggs in the basket, but somehow we ended up at Lovey Smith. I don't know. But since there's just so much uncertainty with this team, I have a hard time putting them up any higher than the number four spot. As for what I like about them and what I think should happen. Obviously, you're going to move on from Deshaun Watson. Hopefully, you know, legal troubles get resolved and, you know, and everything in, in a positive in a positive way, however that ends up going. Hopefully, that works out for them. They can get a bunch of capital for that. Then you have Laramie Tunsil and you also have Cook. Do you decide to trade them away, get even more draft compensation or maybe a younger player or something like that to help, you know, start to establish a legitimate roster under Lovey Smith? I would think it makes more sense to do that just because they at this point, you just go for the full scale rebuild. You just brought in another new head coach. You got a guy in Davis Mills who showed some promise. I hope that they run it back with Mills. I was pretty high on him in the draft, and he was actually who I picked the Steelers to go after during last year's draft previews. I liked Mills to the Steelers because we knew Ben Roethlisberger was on borrowed time. So I really like 
how he played, considering everything that was going on around him, I think he had a solid rookie season. He had some games where he really flashed specifically against the Patriots and Bill Belichick, who usually eats rookie quarterbacks alive. He showed up and had a pretty solid game against them. So I think they run it back with him. I think they probably end up trading in in some fashion, Tunsil, Cook, or, you know, or one or the other. They they honestly could use just as much capital as possible. They don't have as much cap space as I would have expected a team with a real lack of big name talent to have. And I'm not really sure what that's all about. Maybe it's some of the contracts for some of the players. I'm ex- but I do expect Watson to be gone. And if I was to pick one or the other, I think they move Cook. Tunsil still has some time. His contract does expire within, I think, the next year or two. So maybe you try to move him as well. But realistically speaking, they just need to look for as much capital as possible. They have 17.5 mil over the cap to kind of play around with. A litany of free agents, Desmond King, Christian Kirksey, Justin Reed, Kamu Grug. Uh, Grugier Hill, Justin Britt, Jacob Martin. There's a handful of guys on there that they can, you know, opt to bring back or not. And and it'll be interesting to see what Lovey Smith decides to do with this team. But I will say I'm excited for Lovey Smith to be the guy there. Uh, you know, obviously you can't forget the Bears run that he had or, you know, way back in the, uh, what was it, like the earlier 2000s, I guess you could say, mid-2000s, early 2000s, somewhere around there when he brought the Chicago Bears and Rex Grossman to the Super Bowl. So be interesting to see what they do. But as of right now, I just think the Texans at number four makes sense. Next up, coming in at the number three spot, I have the Jacksonville Jaguars, the 3-14 and 14 Jaguars. I like them just a little bit more than I do the Texans because I feel that they do have a few more pieces and they have a ton of money to play with. Bringing in Doug Pedersen, in my opinion, excellent hire. This is somebody that I think can do really well with Trevor Lawrence and helping him develop into the premier quarterback he's supposed to be. It was a really bad year for Trevor this past season. And I don't know if I want to say bad, but just not the year that anyone was really expecting him to have. But when you have the Urban Meyer clown show running around there and everything that was going on, you kind of got what was coming to you with all of that. Now with someone like Doug Pedersen, who has a resume, won a Super Bowl, yeah, things ended ugly in Philadelphia, I think he is a great guy to help lead Trevor Lawrence over the next few years of his career at minimum. Even if things don't work out in the long run, I still think it's a good guy for him to be around as a young QB in the league. They need to focus on finding some receiving threats, some true receiving threats. When Laquan Treadwell is your number one guy, you know you need some receivers, whether it's at the wide receiver position or the tight end position. They need to get some dudes in there. And on top of that, they need to continue to build out their entire defensive core. They do have some solid guys there. Shaq Griffin, of course, Josh Allen, the other Josh Allen, uh, Dwayne Smoot, and a few other guys there. They, they have a lot of holes to fill, but they have less holes, in my opinion, than the Houston Texans. And then, like I said, they have a ton of money to play with. $59.2 million over the cap. They have a ton of money. They could, you know... They could sell, you know, the Urban Meyer situation's been resolved. You have Trevor Lawrence. Jacksonville, in my opinion, right now is more attractive than Jacksonville was when Urban Meyer got brought in last year. So I think that they could probably sell, and plus they're in Florida. So you can sell to uh, to players and potential suitors a little bit more, a little bit easier, and probably more convincingly, in my opinion. They do have some guys they're going to have to re-sign, though. Left guard Andrew Norwell, left tackle Cam Robinson. On top of that, you have linebacker Damian Wilson, center Tyler Shatley. Uh, Laquan Treadmill, I honestly think you should bring back. While he's not going to be your number one guy, he was the best receiver on the team. You might as well bring him back because it seems like him and Trevor Lawrence had at least something going on there. And there's a few other guys to re-sign, but overall – ton of money there is some stability in some positions on the roster and of course most importantly you have your guy at quarterback you have a good head coach with a proven resume so I like the Jaguars just a little bit more than the Houston Texans here coming in at number two I have the Indianapolis Colts they just recently brought in Gus Bradley to be their new defensive coordinator as Eberflus is now the head coach of the Chicago Bears I'm a Colts fan so I think I I put the Colts under a microscope a little bit more than I do all the other teams in the league just because I do follow them slightly more. While I do say I am a football fan first and a Colts fan second, I do find myself checking out the Colts maybe a little bit more often than everyone else in the league. But it does not prevent me from looking at my my favorite team, quote-unquote, 
for what they are and what they need. The quarterback situation. Do I want to say that Carson Wentz is the entire issue for this offense this year? No, but when we needed him to step up, he could not get it done in, in certain situations. And those last two weeks of the season were probably the biggest examples of that. On top of that, secondary needs a little bit of help. Xavier Rhodes is a free agent, and honestly, he did not have near the season he had the year prior, so I think it's time to move on from him. I'm still not 100% sold on Rock Yazine. He did have a better year than he did the year prior, so I like to see growth there. Uh, I would hope that they probably have secondary you know, depth just in general, more specifically cornerback, but just secondary depth as a whole as a box they want to check off and fill during this free agency, along with finding a true left tackle. I loved the idea of bringing in Eric Fisher. Don't get me wrong. Part of me feels like he might have came back a little bit too soon, but ultimately the offensive line did not play up to the standard that they set the last few years, whether it was injuries or in, you know, and people missing time and whatnot, whatever it may have been. I want them to find an actual left tackle, like get a guy in the draft. Don't re-sign Eric Fisher. He was a great one-year piece to, you know, shore up that left side of the line. But let's get a guy in this year's draft, a young guy that we can keep who is the true replacement to the hole that Anthony Costanzo left. And then on top of that, finding a new receiving threat. I loved bringing back T.Y. Hilton. Don't get me wrong. I love the guy. He, you know, when he and Andrew Luck came in the league together, watching them play. And T.Y. Hilton is by far one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL, all biases aside, in the time that he has been in the league. I don't think he's ever really gotten the love he deserved because he had the yards, but he never had the touchdowns. He was never a big touchdown guy, but he had a lot of yards and a lot of clutch catch situations. And he had some this year as well. But I think that it's time that we maybe I'm hoping that if he plays again next year, he's willing to take a little bit less money to free some stuff up. But we need a guy, a true number two guy to Michael Pittman's number one, whether it's at the wide receiver position or maybe going after another tight end. While I love Mo Ali Cox, we need a guy that is going to like I want to see I want a Gronk. I want a Kelsey. I want a, a Kittle. You know, I want one of those guys. I love Mo Ali Cox for what he is. He makes some awesome catches. I'll never forget the one handed catch from a few years ago he made in the corner of the end zone. I feel like I think about that all the time when I think of Mo Ali Cox, but we need legit guys in. And we also have a ton of money to play with, thirty five point nine mil. So Let's see something get done. They were 9-8. and eight. It's a pretty disappointing year. I thought they would have had at least 10 wins this season, and they did not get that done. They fell short to the Titans the both times they played them. And that leads me into the number one team of the NFC South, the Tennessee Titans. 12-5, and five, the number one seed in the AFC. Honestly... Talk about a battle-tested unit. I have so much respect for what the Tennessee Titans did this year. It, it, it was unbelievable watching them win week in and week out, despite the litany of injuries that they were dealing with. Mike Vrabel, winning head coach of the year, so well-deserved in my opinion. Uh, I didn't have him picked for the award, but I mean, I'm definitely not going to argue with the fact of what he did this year. The fact that the Titans even won the number one seed with everything that they dealt with is, is an accomplishment in, its, in and of its own. Um, the only real thing they have to do is is kind of just reload the team. They should address the pass protection a little bit. In my opinion, they had 47 sacks in the year, which was seventh most in the league. So that's probably their biggest area of concern on offense. And then this one is kind of an open-ended thing for you Titans fans. I want to know what you guys think more than anything else. What do you think needs to happen with Tannehill? I have actually supported him the last, you know, handful of years since he's been in Tennessee. I always thought he was better than what was shown while he was in Miami. And when he finally came to Tennessee, there was a very long stretch through, honestly, through this year that he was playing just as efficiently and just as well as some of the top quarterbacks in the league. But then, man, that game against the Bengals, I don't really know what happened, but the three interceptions, like, it felt like once the game was really on his shoulders, he kind of cracked under the pressure and... I want to know what you guys think. Do they need to move on from him? Do they need to maybe just start looking for somebody else at the quarterback position? I've liked Tannehill up until this point, but you can't ignore that playoff performance, in my opinion. I'm not saying he has to go. I don't really know if they should move on from him or not. I feel like you, you can't take one game of bad play and discredit all of the consistency he's had over the last few years. But my goodness, like that's just that's got to be something that the Titans are looking at, right? You know, I would love to know what you guys think. But 
All they really need to do is just kind of move some money around. Uh, David Kessenberry and Ben Jones are free agents, and I would assume that you want to bring back those guys. But on top of that, even if they let one or the other walk, like I said, they need to address pass protection anyway. So maybe they feel like if there's someone in the draft or maybe a free agent lineman, I'm not sure. Teron Armstead's going to be out there. I don't know if they have the money to bring him in, but... You know, there are some guys that are going to be, uh, you know, looking to either potentially move on or get resigned by the Titans. Um, Harold Landry's another one, Rashawn Evans, both their tight ends, Jeff Swain and Michael Pruitt. So you have a few guys in free agency you need to resign. They are negative in the cap number. They're at 7.8 over the cap. So they'll have to move money around to resign some of these guys. And we'll have to see how they do that. But ultimately, I mean, this team dealt with so much and was missing so much throughout the season. And for them to have gone 12 and five, I have a hard time really arguing as to why they shouldn't be the number one team in this AFC South. This is probably one of the more cut and dry divisional power rankings in my opinions. But that is it for the AFC South and what I think of them and who I think is at the bottom and at the top. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.